Luke Harper is officially out of the Wyatt family. All of a sudden, with this newfound freedom, there's this newfound identity. Who am I? Where do I come from? Mum? You've left the compound. You're hitchhiking down a long and lonesome road. Who are you gonna call? <laughs> Why Christian, you ask? Good question, viewer. Christian has some experience in that of a cult. One might even say that his cult leader was a little more special. I can just see it now. Harper turns up at Christian's house, welcomed with open, loving arms and a kazoo. Teaches him how to brush his teeth and use a comb. Harper, tears filling his eyes, mainly because he's not used to the taste of mint. Harper looks at himself in the mirror, his beautiful, shining eyes poking out behind that hedge of facial hair. And he thinks to himself, my time is now. And this starts Harper on the greatest montage since Clueless. <laughs> It's just like Shakespeare. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you my brother, Bray Wyatt. Without any help, without any distractions, thank you for listening to Nads. Bray Wyatt listens to Nads. Bray came out on top and at Smackdown Live in a triple threat between my brother, soccer mum hair and jorts boy. After being super kicked in the face by beautiful Luke Harper, Bray still won. But here's a twist. <laughs> At the end of all that, Randy and Bray were face to face, just like how they first met, just a lot less romantic. Randy concedes the championship match at WrestleMania because he is Bray's servant. Uh, excuse me for being cynical sister-in-law, I didn't see this one coming. Turns out he had it in him, he had it in him hard for Bray Wyatt. We have breaking news here at WWE's Most Ridiculous. We cross to Anna live at the scene of the crime. Anna? Right here you'll see a bit of canvas that once housed an entirely original, authentic painting by Anna Bowart of WWE's Most Ridiculous. The painting, depicting Lord Mayor President James Ellsworth and one Braun Harambe Strowman, was in the style of some guy called Michelangelo's creation of Adam. The painting, debuted February 6th, episode 14 of WWE's Most Ridiculous, was last seen February 6th, episode 14, WWE's most- Police have urged the public to come forward with any information of the stolen painting, but right now, it's tense times here at the studio. Has there been any reported sightings of the painting? Have you, have you spoken to the artist herself? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Reports have come in that the painting has possibly been spotted or one very similar to. However, the artist has come forward and said at this point, she'd just be happy with monetary reimbursement. Hmm. Hmm. Fair. Well, let's hope this one is sold before it really becomes an art bust. <laughs> More on that later. We kind of sort of got it. <laughs> she wasn't pregnant. It wasn't a catfish. Santino didn't come out in a dress. It's a nice change. She comes out as Emmalina, and then at the end of sounding really into everything she was saying, she turns around and she says, <laughs> I'm not doing it, pretty much. I wonder at this point what was going through Corey Graves' mind because before she came out, it sounded like he was about to break the table for spray or perhaps that of a jackhammer. I think this means we're getting Emma back. I can't help but feel a little elated. <laughs> it's almost like you're dating someone and they went away for a while and they start sending you all these messages and you think, oh wow, you're turning into a bit of a d douche. And then they get back and you're expecting the worst, but then they walk through the door and it's just your badass leather vest wearing, gun wielding, normal boyfriend that you know and love. <laughs> it's Brian Pillman. <laughs> it's Emma. We're, we're, talking, we're talking about Emma. I'm very happy Emma is back. I can't wait to see whose head she smashes in. It's really exciting times. First sells a red wedding. Then Glenn got his head bashed in with Barbie. Now we have the festival of friendship. <laughs> Sorry, getting ahead of myself again. Jericho got to the ring. It's like looking at a real life care bear. So full of love. He had actual gifts of Jericho. A Guggenheim statue. Friendship, the magician. It was really shit, but that's not his fault. That's just Craigslist. They had a priceless piece of artwork. 
everything that you could possibly ever want or imagine for a wedding. Clown strippers! And then K.O. presented his gift to Jericho. He attacks him, smashes him through the screen. He rips off his sequin coat, beats him up around the ring. No one does anything to help him. Of course they don't. Refs. Jericho is left shattered in the middle of the ring. And he's taken off to hospital. <laughs> Love is dead. <laughs> Love is dead, marriage is fake, nothing is real, relationships are bullshit, penises are not forever, and we're all gonna die alone. Since we were introduced to Baron Corbin at NXT, he has always been a one-man wolf pack, the long-lost brother of Elias Sampson. But it's not to say it's all serious for him. He had a lot of fun beating up Callisto, and now we see he's having a bit of a tiff with Dean relatively stable Ambrose. So much so that he threw Ambrose into an electrical table. Sparks flew. Not in that sense. It seems to me something has snapped in Baron's head. One might say conspiracy, similar Noam Dar, Cedric Alexander situation where, you know, he wants to be boarding the love boat. Or it's something that isn't common, but it's very real and it's very alarming and Baron Corbin has been spotted around wearing a slug on his upper lip. Anna, you might say, isn't he just trying to grow a moustache? <laughs> Recently, as we all know, WWE held a UK championship and within the championship tournament, Moustache Mountain, a magical colony hidden upon the mountains, much like in Xanadu. No one really knows how to get there. All we know, if you were gifted with the moustache, you hold the golden ticket. Baron Corbin wants so badly to climb Moustache Mountain. Poor boy just wants to be Tom Selleck. But Baron Corbin does not own Baron Corbin anymore. Baron Corbin is owned by the Errol Flynn and it's taking over his mind. Dean, you know what you've got to do, brother. The power is yours.